and get started with it here. Let's go to Luke chapter 8. Instead of reading this whole account, this is the case where uh, Jesus is talking about the sower went forth to sow seed, and some fell on certain kind of ground, and there was only one that was productive. And then here in the 8th chapter, <clears throat> and begin, uh, I mean, I'll just read this one verse, verse 15. It says, But that on good ground are they which, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Several things I want you to notice here is that they, it was good ground. Now, what depends on what you're going to get out of this message today depends on what kind of condition your heart's in. And also, it depends uh, largely on the honesty of your heart. Whether you have a good heart, <clears throat> and it depends whether you're just going to hear the word and do something with it or what you're going to do with the word after it's heard. You can conclude that the word is not the way I believe, it's not the way I've been taught, or you can conclude what the Bible says. Well, anyway, it says they bring forth food with, with patience, so that means if you're going to be a fruit-bearing Christian, that means there's going to have to be some patience in, involved in your life. Now, that verse is telling us a lot, and it says that they have a good and honest heart uh, bring forth fruit. Dear Heavenly Father, open our understanding today as we enter into the teaching of the Word. Lord, make it clear for us to understand. We give you praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Honesty brings forth victory. Honesty brings forth victory. Dishonest people are looking for excuses to find what they want to do, but the honest person is doing something else. You see, it's the dishonest people that have a sin problem. Honest people don't have a sin problem. It's because there's a difference between the two. Have you ever <clears throat> had people that say, I don't go to church because hypocrites go there? Well, dishonest people are looking for hypocrites in the church. Honest people are seeking God. That's the difference. One comes looking for hypocrites, the other comes looking for God. The dishonest people come making excuses for their sin, and the reason I did this is because of so-and-so. Honest people do not need an excuse. They confess it, get rid of it. Dishonest people will <clears throat> not take responsibility for their sin. Honest people take full responsibility for what they did. Dishonest people have problems with faith. Honest people have basis for their faith. Dishonest people hate truth. Honest people love truth. Dishonest people expect others to be dishonest. Honest people expect others to be honest. Have you ever been suspicious of somebody there may be a good reason for it, but a lot of times it's because of the lack of honesty. Now, <clears throat> you remember the, the fellow had, the ground was good. Now, we, we got good ground was the thing that the man had, and the second thing he was, he had <clears throat> a good ground, and he had a good and honest heart. Is that right? All right, now, the Word of God and you is going to make a lot of difference now. What happens to you? All right, the Word of God is true. It's not, it's not only true, but it's truth. Now, if the Word of God is truth, it depends how much of this Word can go into you determines how much honesty and how much integrity you have. Well, let me start over on that word. 
All right? It depends on your honesty. <clears throat> Did you know that the Word of God will not cling, cleave, hold to a dishonest heart? They're two different things. An honest heart, you remember the, the psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. I, if his heart was dishonest, that statement is a lie. If there's any dishonesty in him, that statement is a lie. It's only honesty when you say, I want to do what's right. I have a desire to do truth. I, I want to know the truth. How many people have you heard say, I want to know the truth? I mean, it doesn't matter if it hurts or not. I want to know the truth. But deep down inside, you know they don't want to know the truth. Now, listen. Did you know that, that the American society is so so shady with the truth and I've been for years that I don't think they're aware of whether they believe in truth or not. Let me ask you something. <clears throat> when I was a youngster, uh, I went to the store one day to get some stuff for my mother and while I was there, the coat man pulled in and he took a bottle of pop out of the uh, they used to have boxes, you know, with, what is it, 24 Coke bottles in it. it. Happened to be glass bottles. And he pulled one out and went into the, the cooler and stuck a warm one in, pulled a cool one out, came out and drank it while he was talking to me. After he got done drinking it, he took a stone and held it over top of the slot there where the thing would have normally come out and broke it. Now he says to me, this way I don't have to buy my pop. <clears throat> I just report that there's a bottle broken. So he goes back and he tells him at the office that there's so many bottles broken. Well, that's all right. <clears throat> now, it is true, back to the story I read Billy ago, it is true that the bottle is broken. But it's not truth, is it? All right, what's wrong with that statement? You see, now listen carefully. It is true that the bottle is broken, but it's not truth. Now, how many of you have heard that, you know, we lost the harder sides of splitting? And now, uh, you <laughs> Or somebody just laughed until they couldn't hardly stand it anymore. See, we've gotten so used to lying that the reason I didn't come to church was because of. Come on. What is the reason you wasn't at church? Well, it was because. Now, wait a minute. What was the reason you weren't at church? It may be true that you had to go get some clothes. But that had nothing to do with truth. The reason the Word of God doesn't work in people's lives and why the promises of God doesn't work in people's lives is because of dishonesty. The reason that uh, I was late was because. Now you start thinking, now why was you late? You have no legitimate right to be late. <clears throat> I remember years ago, Esther and I, Used to be late to church every Sunday. Well, we could have said we had a long way to go, and we did. We had to travel a long way to church. We could have used that for an excuse, but that wasn't really the problem. It wasn't because traffic lights change either. It's because we didn't get started in time. One day we pulled in at church, and uh, somebody else pulled in beside us. And a little boy jumped out of the car, <clears throat> and I don't know what they was thinking about, but one of them said, we are like Daniel Rotas is here. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's the last day we was late. <laughs> if Daniel Rotas is, is here, we know we're late. And we had to change. 
Do you know, the thing of it is, folks, I'm going to ask you some questions today. And all of this sermon is going to be centered around questions. In a sense, it's going to be questions that at least the headquarters are. What kind of ground is this seed going to fall on today? What's going to happen to this message today? Now, bring forth. He said, in that passage of scripture we read, and it says he keeps the word and brings forth fruit. All right? We have people today that if you was to look at them, they have the word of God in their head, but the word of God is not in their heart. They can quote the word of God in their head, but it's not in their heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You see, everything that Satan has to offer is a lie. Everything God has to offer is truth. So anytime you in any shady way try to excuse yourself or say the reason this didn't happen or that, it doesn't matter if you have an excuse. Let's say it like this. The man who said, I married a wife and therefore I cannot come. It is true he married a wife. I think you'd say, well, it's true that he married a wife, but it wasn't truth. The truth he didn't want to come is be it wasn't because he got married, it's because he, he had a problem, deeper problem than that. The man that says, I, uh, I just bought a track of land, I need to go sit and, and so forth, I'm excused. The truth is he might have. The people that bought all the auction and stuff, it, they've got an excuse, but they begin to make excuse. You see, lies requires to make excuse. We make an excuse, an excuse that turns into a lie because it's not all truth. The Word of God will not function in a person's life that is dishonest because the Word of God is 100% truth. If it is not true, I mean, if it's not truth, the Word of God will not enter into you and stay there. It, it has no, it is not welcome there. The word of God in a dishonest heart cannot retain there because you can't serve two masters. You're serving the devil. So if your heart is, uh, is, uh, is dishonest, then you're a liar. You live a lie. Your, your whole life is a lie. The, or the word that you're trying to get a hold of is truth and nothing but the truth. So the more you try to live the truth, the, the worse it gets because you're, you're now, your spirit is confused. Now, when you get in that confusion, your spirit is confused. The word says this, and you said this, and the spirit doesn't know who to obey. So now, the spirit is in a state of confusion. So this is where we go. Now in the charismatic world, we got people that say, the Bible doesn't mean what it says. Well, if the Bible doesn't mean what it says, do you mean what you say? That's what I want to know. Do you, are you always honest? Do you mean what you say? Have you analyzed the word of God through the spirit to find out whether it's right or not? No, but my so-and-so taught me. Yet we've got more confusion today that has nothing to do with truth at all. Most people are governed in this world not through truth but emotions. Most people's life is centered around an emotional experience. If it's an emotional, then it's God. If it isn't, because the spirit is confused. Because your inner spirit is confused, and because we violated the word of God, now we need something emotional to keep us going. So if we sing and it's not uh, what your spirit says, what your spirit says has very little to do with it. What your spirit decides is not what God decides. God is not governed by your spirit. 
You can have an emotional experience and think the Lord is carrying you through a service and find out that all it was was an emotional experience. You find it out a couple days later when you're down in discouragement and perplexity. Folks, the only way that God can get across to us is the word of God must find a good soil. That soil is an honest heart. That good and honest heart will be productive. When that word says, thou shalt not, that's exactly what you do. And if you break that and call yourself a Christian, you are a liar. Because he that commit a sin is of the devil, according to first uh, John chapter three, verse one. I mean, pardon me, verse eight. First John chapter three, verse eight. So we are saying, if I say, well, grace, grace is my uh, defender and I sin, but grace covers me, you're a liar. Grace does not permit sin. The reason that we came up with perverted grace is because we came up with a perverted gospel. The reason we came up with a perverted gospel is because we dropped the laws and commandments of God. The reason we lost the laws and commandments of God is because of sin. The reason we lost, got into sin was because we lost contact with God. We're going in a category and a rumpus now. It's not hard for us to say, I'll see you at church Sunday. <clears throat> Never show up. Somebody that's not here today said, I'll see you next Sunday. They're not here. Now, well, the reason we're not there is because, no, no, no. It doesn't really matter to me why they're not here. It doesn't really make me any difference why they're not here. But the honesty of the whole situation is, why aren't you here? There's people missing this morning. <clears throat> you say, well, the reason I wasn't there is because of, you don't, I tell you what, seriously, why are you not there? Why, you, know, you can make all the excuses you want to. God does not go by your excuse, nor does he go by your mouth. He goes by the word. He wants to know if you have truth or not. He's not interested in whether it's true that you had a flat tire. All right, somebody's here this morning that uh, tried to come to church. They couldn't. They had a problem with the one vehicle. So to go to get the other, couldn't find the keys. Did they have, did they have an excuse to stay home? Uh, the answer is no. Why didn't they? Because they found the keys and they're sitting here this morning. It was true they had a reason not to be here, but the truth is they could be here. They proved it. Is that right? You and I are so used to saying, well, I'll do so and so, but it's very easy to back out of it. But if we had truth, we would never back out of it. We would make sure that we would make it good. How many of you have purchased an automobile and you agreed that you're going to pay so much a month on that vehicle? Right after you bought it, unknown to you, you lost your job. Now you have an excuse of not making that payment. You have a reason of not making that payment. But one thing you don't realize is that God is still looking for the truth. Did you know that the word of God will not work for you? It can be shady and, and you can get some answers to your prayers and so forth. It makes it look good. But after all, you're back to truth. God's going to hold you responsible. One, I don't have the money to pay him. 
It may be true that you don't have the money to pay him, but it's not truth all the way. If you had an honest heart the way you could have, you'd have analyzed this thing to see whether you can make the payments. You would have thought, what's going to happen? See, we're not prepared. What happens if I lose my job? What am I going to do with it? All right, now, let's say the man, it's true that he doesn't have the payments. He got laid off. What is he going to do now? He is facing truth. A lie tells him, just don't pay it. Is that right? The liar tells him, don't pay it. An honest heart comes into play because this guy's got an honest heart. What's he going to do? All right, he's going to have to get truth. If, if this man carries truth and he goes into a place and says, look, <clears throat> bank, I made an agreement that I'm going to pay $250 a month on this payment, but unfortunately I lost my job and I'm wondering if there's some way we can work it out. That banker will soon determine whether you're telling the truth or not. An honest person will find something that's very important in here. Now watch this. Now God begins to move. I can't make the payment. God's going to move. What's he going to do? All right, grace comes on the scene. Because I got all my stuff in a row. Everything is honest. Everything in me is honest. Furthermore, you probably won't get fired if you have an honest heart. If you're doing your work right, you probably won't get fired, but if you did, you got laid off and the company closed up. God's grace with your honesty will help you to make an adjustment up here where you can find grace in the eyes of the, the fellow you're working with. How do I know? Because I know that's the way it works. This is the purpose of grace, folks. Grace isn't lie and the grace will take care of you. This is the, the, the normal Christian philosophy. Lie and grace will take care of it. Now, wait a minute. Now, what did I just get done showing you? And you'll find that this is right. Grace helped me because of honesty. Those of you which say, I've sinned, I have sinned. Two things happened. I was, because of honesty, I failed. Grace comes on the scene and the next thing that comes is mercy. Mercy now helps me. I can cry for mercy and say, Lord, remember mercy because I'm honestly dealing with my problem. <clears throat> Wherefore, brethren, look out from among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business of taking care of the widows, Acts chapter 6 and 3. Why do they want men of honest hearts? Because they're going to be handling money. You got to be honest. Furthermore, if they don't have an honest heart, if your preacher doesn't have an honest heart, he'll get up there and start lying to you. If you don't have an honest heart, you'll hear such things as, let me just give you an illustration. One man said, preacher, a dear preacher, love the preacher. Now, I'm not going to tell you who he was, but this is what he said. He said, one day I was coming into a place and he said I was in a hurry and they was trying to sell. Oh, he said, I don't remember what it was, selling tickets to Myers, I think. But anyway, I've been to Myers several times and I wasn't interested in going back. And then he goes on with his story. Now, everybody knows he wasn't at Myers. But why did he say that? 
University of Philip will tell you that. He's liable to tell you some other things not right. I'm going to be careful listening to a person that's a preacher that's going to tell me things like that. See, what, what may appear to be right may not be. <clears throat> Even in court or anything else. Let me give you an illustration. Years ago, there was <clears throat> an aged couple. They were one day thinking, you know, let's go down to the old schoolhouse where we were sweethearts and let's go back and Romance over the past a little bit. We'll go back down to the old school where we used to sit beside the old wood stove on a cold winter day. So him and his wife is going down there and they're having a great time. And <clears throat> on their way back, a Federal Reserve truck door opened up and some money rolled out on the road. And she picked it up and he said, Don't take it, that's dishonest. We have to give it back to them. She said, finders, keepers, losers, weepers. The next day, somebody knocked at the door, and she opened it, and they said, did you all find any money out here on the road by chance? She said, no, we haven't found any money. <clears throat> and he said, honey, you're lying. Now, you've got to be honest. We did find some money. So the people that came said, <clears throat> just a minute, she said, he's senile, don't listen to him, he's senile. So they said, well, let's take him back in the back room here and talk to him, and then we'll come back out and talk to you. We'll get you separated here a little bit. So they went back to him and said, now, sir, <clears throat> tell me a little bit what happened. He said, well, me and my wife was walking home from school the other day, and... And he tapped the other guy on the shoulder and said, let's go. Now some of y'all didn't catch that. <clears throat> what appears sometimes to be true is not true. Anytime you scheme, anytime you trick, you have a problem with truth, and truth becomes your enemy instead of your friend. You say, well, I'm spirit-filled. Well, there's more than one kind of spirit. Listen, folks. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. That's where I want it. I went down in the hidden parts. That's where I want to know. Psalms 51, 6. Down in the hidden part of the heart. What's down in the heart? That's what I want to know. Listen, all you people with the call on your life in here today, I want to ask you a question. What are you doing about your life? What are you doing? Those of you which may be sleepy, I don't see anybody sleepy, but uh, let's say you are sleepy. Why are you sleepy? Well, I didn't get enough sleep. It may be true. You didn't get enough sleep, but it isn't truth. I'm going to prove it to you. If I was standing up here and said, one of you people in here today is going to get a million dollars. Somebody going to get a million dollars in here today. Now this is not, I'm just telling you a story now. Don't get excited. <laughs> How many of you would say, I'm so sleepy, Brother Rhodes. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> don't tell me. You know what? The truth is you're not interested in what's going on. <laughs> now that's a big slam, isn't it? But y'all got still toes. I'm going to ask you now. 
See, the reason the Word of God is in such a mess today is because uh, behind the pulpits is people that are mixing truth and lies together. Now we're in trouble. We need psychiatrists. That's what we need is psychiatrists. We need counselors. If you just go back and say, you know what your problem is? Somewhere, somewhere there's dishonesty. Let, let me tell you a story that actually happened. There's a preacher told me one day. He, he drinks coffee until he vomits. And uh, he, he just, he, he's so addicted to coffee that it's absolutely hideous. And one day he said to me, he said, I've got to go to the hospital way off. And I just want to know if you'd go with me. Well, on the way, he's drinking coffee and drinking coffee and drinking coffee and drinking coffee. It just about turned me off. He said, the doctor told me I have to drink coffee. We get up there, and he said, go in the room with me, because he said, I'm just kind of nervous about this thing. We go in, and the first thing the doctor said, are you still drinking coffee? He said, yes, sir. He said, I told you that coffee going to kill you if you don't get rid of some of that coffee. Wait a little here. Just a... 20 minutes ago, you're telling me that the doctor told you to drink coffee. Now he's in my ears is telling you you're going to die if you don't quit drinking so much coffee. You know, on the way home, he never said a word, and I never said a word about it. We have got, like one fellow said that the Lord told, I mean the doctor told him to smoke cigarettes, cool cigarettes, the cools, if, and some of y'all don't know what cool cigarettes are, they got methyl in them. Cool cigarettes. Ain't nothing cool about them. <laughs> They'll kill you. He said the doctor told me, but the doctor didn't tell him that. The doctor tells him take methyl, not methyl cigarettes. See, part of it's true, part of it's not. So you see, we I to. That's the reason the word of God's not working. All right. Some of you say, I feel like I'm backslidden. Why are you backslidden? Buy the truth and sell it not. That's what it says in Proverbs 23, 23. Truth. Get a hold of the truth. You can't buy truth as such, but it means get a hold of the truth. Don't let it get away from you. Because God's word will never work for a person that doesn't have an honest heart. They in a good and honest heart brought forth. Good ground produced. We got grace all mixed up. We got everything all mixed up. And, and uh, since I'm a rather of a tough preacher, I'm going to start cheering you up about the wrong. <clears throat> Did you know the devil is desperately afraid of men and white women of integrity? He's scared of people with integrity because people with integrity will hold to the truth. And he operates in a lie, so he's in trouble, isn't he? You go into court and you say, I swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me lie. That's what they should say, rather. <laughs> now, folks, why do people run out of this church when truth is spoken? Why don't they come back? If they get an honest start, they'll find out that I'm after their soul. You say, well, you don't show any love. Do you think I love people that I let go of hell? In other words, I love you to hell. 
That's an awful crazy thing to say. You ask people, how is it between you and your, the Lord? Oh, just fine. Glory, hallelujah, praise God. Esther and I was with a couple one day, and it was glory, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And all of a sudden, I began to see things change. We're supposed to go out and eat with this couple. And I saw there was a tremendous change all of a sudden. It's not glory, hallelujah. After a while, they're somewhere else and they're come back and said things have kind of changed here. We're not going to be able to eat with y'all. Something else came up. The Lord said what came up was their sin. They're shacked up. They're living in adultery. They can holler, shout, and holler hallelujah in most churches, but they can't holler hallelujah around you. You know, I pitied those people. I pitied them so bad, and I wanted to just take them aside and just say, look, come on, let me help you. The Lord said, don't touch them. Let them go. They don't want help. Renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, but we have. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handing the word of God deceitfully. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Renounced, disowned, reject anything that's not of the truth. Well, I tell you, you people are mighty quiet in here this morning. Just hang in here. Everything will be okay. Craftiness, trickiness, having the word of God deceitfully, that's what's happening all over. That's the reason you get on and you start going home and you listen to this fellow on television and this on television and that on television. That's why you're confused. See, there's a fellow that I know of got all messed up. He hears somebody say this, and he goes for that. He hears somebody else say this. Now, the other week you heard somebody say that you never should say Jesus. Jesus is a bad word. You don't use that. That's a, a pagan. And you're supposed to say Yahweh and Yeshua. Well, I don't have anything to matter with that at all. But I tell you, I've never cast out devils or healed the sick in the name of Yeshua or Yahweh or the one. But I have seen them healed in the name of Jesus, so I know Jesus' name is not tagging, no matter what they say. I have nothing against people that want to use that word. You know, one man got kind of shook up because when he saw me casting out devils in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he got kind of shook up. He said, well, you know, that name does work. I said, sure, it works. I'm not a Hebrew. I don't speak Hebrew language. Now, if Elizabeth was here, I think she can probably. She speaks a number of different languages. I don't speak Hebrew. I think when I say, dear Lord, I'm asking this in Jesus' name, he doesn't look over and say, who's that Jesus? Who's he mean by Jesus? Never heard of him before. He doesn't do that. He knows, listen. <clears throat> this church is called Truth, Light, and Life. If you don't have the truth, you'll never get the light and you'll never get the life. Now, here comes the questions. You're going to take and now you're going to get ready. You've been a Christian. You want to change. You want to do things right. All right? We're going to ask you some questions and see. Number one, 
Do you honestly want to repent and renounce your past? Every bit of dishonesty in you, do you honestly want to renounce everything in the past? Oh, I just thought about something. Somebody's planning to take me out for lunch today. I better preach nice. Is that honest? What's wrong with that? I mean, I don't want them to say, you know, plans have changed. <laughs> it won't. <laughs> it won't with those people. But must I, must I cut down the truth just a little bit so the church gets full? Why not? If I just, if I told people all, oh, everything's okay, you know, we all sin and come short of the glory of God. I mean, sin a little bit. Just so it's not too much. Where does the Bible say you can sin a little bit? You see, do you honestly want to repent and renounce that? If you've got any dishonesty in you, you need to get rid of that so the truth comes out of you. But do you really want that? See, the Lord, you remember that there verse in the Psalms that says, search me, O Lord, try me. How would you like for the Lord just take a flashlight and just shine right in you? <clears throat> There's a preacher one day has a big congregation. When I say big, I'm talking about several thousand people. And I'm not going to tell you all the story because you all get to catch on this. But this man, one day the Lord said to him, he said, we got the best worship team that I knew of. I didn't know anybody could praise the Lord like we could praise. I didn't know any church that had as much of the move of God in it as ours. People getting healed and all kinds of things. We had a great move of God. The man, I heard him say it out of his own mouth, folks. This is not something I'm guessing at. He said, the Lord spoke to me and threw me on the floor, and I laid on the floor for a long time. Can't get up. And the Lord said, most of the people in your church, at least half of them is not saved. I want you to get up and get your church straightened out. Get your worships changed. He said, well, Lord, we got the best worship service I know of. He said, no, you don't. The worship does not please me. He said, well, Lord, we've been winning souls. We've got great big soul winning. He said, no, you're not winning them. You're getting church members. He said, the Lord had me to do something I never dreamed. So the Lord said, tonight, when you have your service, because the people that's going to be the other way are going to be mainly out of the way. said, I want you to take a flashlight to church, and I want you to turn the lights off. You turn that flashlight on, and whoever I have you to shine that light on, I want you to speak the word of the Lord over them. Boy, this guy's shaking. He said, I took that flashlight and explained to people what I'm going to do, and I shone that flashlight right on somebody, and I said, you're living in adultery. And he said, that man jumped out of his seat and come up at about that time there's a woman coming screaming up from the other side and said he's been committing adultery with me. And he said that night I took that flashlight and I began to shine it around that place and he said I'll tell you how many people we had left after I got done. Not very many. He said they were not coming back. They were scared. Instead of repenting, a bunch of them left. He said, now we got all this facility. Now we got all this room. We got all this debt. 
We got all this magnificent building. Now we don't have a very big worship team anymore. But he said, we got the Spirit of God. That makes the difference. <clears throat> Holy. <clears throat> he that covers his sin shall not prosper, and he that confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. You forsake him. Number two. That, that first one was, do you honestly want to repent, renounce your sins? Number two, do you honestly take full responsibility for all your sins and wrongdoing? Your misunderstanding of the word of God or your, the way you believe in everything, do you take full responsibility for it? 1 Samuel 12, 13, when Nathan come to talk to, to David, he said, I have sinned against the Lord, David said. He didn't make an excuse and said, well, it was her fault. If she wouldn't have been down there naked, dressed like she was, I would no, no, no. He said, I've sinned. I have sinned. And Samuel said, because of that repentant heart, Samuel said, the Lord also hath to put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. He was supposed to have been stoned to death. That's 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 13. <clears throat> against thee and thee only have I sinned he said in Psalms 51 verse 4 number 3 do you honestly want to change do you honestly want to change Jesus told the woman caught in the adultery in John chapter 8 verse 11 neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more go and sin no more the impotent man that was healed of his impotent circumstances, when Jesus met him, afterwards Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee. I don't have time to talk about that right now. That's John chapter 5 and verse 14. But Jesus did say that you get the devil cast out of him and let him come back. The latter end is worse than the beginning. Peter speaks about uh, he that suffers in the place has ceased from sin. Ceased. You don't sin anymore. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. If you really want to change, if you really want to change, that's the valuable thing. Number four, do you honestly want victory or do you want just uh, somebody to take up for you. And all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 37. More than conquerors. Romans 6, 14 says, Sin will have no more dominion over you. No more dominion. You're not under the law, but under grace. What's grace got to do with it? Grace keeps you from getting into sin. You're not under the law, you're under sin. Number five, do you honestly interpret the scriptures? When you're going to find your mistakes in the word of God, are you honest enough? Or are you going to rest them like they talked about over in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 16? Paul, some of the things Paul wrote, Peter said it was hard to understand. And they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also other scriptures. But then he didn't finish there. He said that their own destruction. It's a destructive thing. Only destructive See, the scriptures, we can say, well, the Bible says this, and the Bible says that. We can make excuses for ourselves. No. We need to get down into the scripture and find out. Number, number six, do we honestly want to do what it takes to make restitution? Sometimes we've got to change things around a little bit. Oh, Zacchaeus over there in Luke 19 and verse 8. After he climbed that tree and Jesus had him come down, Jesus said, I'm going to your house. 
And Zacchaeus got under conviction. He didn't run away. He didn't go hide. He didn't leave church. He didn't go somewhere else where they don't preach against sin. He turned around and Zacchaeus stood. That means he stopped. He stood. Said, Lord, behold, Oh, he said, uh, let me read it completely here. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything but false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Fourfold. Think about that. Restitution. I'm going to pay her back. I'm going to give back four times what I took. What did Jesus say? Today, salvation coming to your heart into your home, into your very being. Why? It's because he had an honest heart. That honest heart of that crook, when that crook saw his heart and his integrity was off, he came into the very presence of truth. He didn't do what most people do today, run away. He's going to do with the truth exactly what you're going to do with it today, one or the other. You're either going to accept it or reject it. See, every sermon I give you either has to be accepted or rejected. Every sermon I give you either rejected or accepted. You, you don't have a choice. You can throw it off and forget it. You rejected it. Forget about it. Number seven, do you honestly want to break away from your traditions or your lifestyle or your old buddies? The old buddies come to you and say, Hey, I'll tell you what, why don't you go out with us tonight? Years ago, a lady said to me, I love the Lord. I know I don't live right, but I love the Lord. And I said, Ma'am, I love the Lord too, but I don't live like you do. She said, but I love the Lord. I said, all right. I said, you all drink and cuss and lie and steal and cheat and everything else, commit adultery, run around with each other's wives and everything else. I tell you what, you said you're a Christian. Is that right? Yes, I am. All of you are Christians, that's right. You love the Lord, that's right. I said, well, why don't we all go down to the tavern tonight and just get drunk and all celebrate the wonderful love of Jesus? And everybody stopped. They looked at me. And the main speaker said to me, hey, you wouldn't do that. I said, why wouldn't I do that? These are the exact words. Because... You is a better Christian than we is. <clears throat> I want you to analyze some things you're doing. Come ye out from among them and be your separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters. Come out, get away from it. You need to start reading, jot down your notes there in Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians six, beginning of verse fifteen, going through eighteen, and I'll be a father unto you, folks. Really, you may say I want to change, but my Bible says, and I want the Bible to say this. Remember what I said the other day. When you get away from the good book says this and when the good man says this and the man upstairs, you, you're starting on the right trail when you get away from the man upstairs and the good book. It is the Bible. That's what it is. It's the Bible and it's God's word. There's no man upstairs. He's God. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you, in closing, I want to ask you this question. What do you do with the Word of God when you read it? 
Do you have your own interpretation or the interpretation of your, your church or your denomination or your somebody told you this? You can never go by just one statement in the Word of God. You have to compare Scripture with Scripture. You have to compare spiritual things with spiritual. For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Not moved by church tradition. Second Peter 1.21 Folks, the reason some people are down in discouragement and perplexity, the reason they can't have victory, the reason they're in tears, that all the things... The reason they can't, they can't have victory. They don't have honesty. The reason you can stop sinning and get away from the desire of sin is through honesty. Absolute honesty. Truth. You, you won't be worried about the hypocrites in church. You won't be looking for them. You'll be seeking God. I don't know how many people have told me over the years they can't go to church because hypocrites are there. I said, I am too. And so is God. That's the reason I go. I'm not a hypocrite looker. I'm not seeking hypocrites. If the word of God doesn't work in your life, go back and check to see what's wrong. What have you been watching on your internet? What have you been watching on TV? What have you been looking at? What kind of magazines are you gaping at? What kind of stuff are you doing? Where have you been? It'll tell you a lot about it. You know why I talk like this? Because I care where you spend eternity. I don't want anybody missing when I get over there. And the Lord says, these people was under your jurisdiction. They didn't make it. Why didn't they? Why didn't you tell them the truth? As far as I know, I can say, Lord, they chose not to have victory. They chose to be defeated. They chose Satan above you. They had a choice. They decided that they would rather spend eternity in hell and enjoy a little foolishness than to let you give them the victory and then the joy of the Lord being there. They chose it. I could stand before Almighty God, I think, today and say, Lord, they made their choice. I have committed to them the word that you've given to me. The rec word of reconciliation. Now today, you're going to have to make a choice what you're going to do with the word. Whatever you're going to do with it. Praise you, Jesus. All right. <laughs> Let us tonight turn to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. I'll we'll begin reading it in the first verse. The message I have for tonight is mastering your life. You are in charge. When thou settest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings and fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainties.